Okay, here's the finished product. Chambers tight. This is a no-go. Pretty solid no-go. Load the gauge. A lot of people use tape. What I use is a piece of paper. See that in there? Like a piece of paper, a piece of paper is three thousandths thick. Pull the piece of paper out. My gold gauge back in. There it is. There's the go gauge. Very happy with that. And then just for uh, your viewing pleasure live, there's a little piece of paper that in there. I'll have to edit that out. Piece of papers in there. Solid. No go. I'm happy. Hopefully you guys learned something. I've learned something. I'd like to make a note about this fixture here and how crude it looks. I worked in a couple machine shops. First one when I 18 years ago. Um, every side was machined. All six sides were machined and all 12 corners were chamfered. You know, then went off to heat treat, surface grinding, jig bore, or EDM. You know, that was fine for that industry. My next job, I was squaring up a block, pillow block, for a bearing. And I'm squaring all six sides, and the owner says, What are you doing? I'm like, I'm squaring this up. Why? Well, because that's what I do. He said, Well, that doesn't make us money. All you need is one datum flat, mount your holes in it, bolt it to a setup, which was an angle plate with a you know, square on it, and then drill, bore, and then ream your hole, and you're done. He didn't care if there were saw cuts on the ends or not because the customer never saw it, never affected the functionality of it. So when you look at this piece right here, it's milled on the bottom. Milled on both sides, functionality of it's perfect. You know, I didn't have to, I could have machined all these sides, made everything perfect, shined it up, painted it, but why? Uh, functions great. I'll oxidize these surfaces so they won't rust. And I have a beautiful jig that took me, you know, a half hour to make. Thanks, and I hope you've enjoyed it.